Huh? What's that? Extra content that you haven't been watching on the second channel? You silly, it's right there. What? Mr. GG, new merch. Come on, guys, you guys already know about this. Come on, come on, cut it out, cut it out. So I almost never do disclaimers, but uh, I probably should for this one, so, so I'm gonna. This video is not for children across the board. So if you're watching this on mom's <laughs> iPad, go away, you babe. I'm gonna be talking about a lot of dark things that even adults won't enjoy hearing. Even my sponsors are rated. You've been warned. Necromantic is art. You're just too much of a prude to get it. Oh, I couldn't fuck someone who's not moving. Cause you've just been fucking nothing but winners, huh? Necrophilia. Sexual intercourse with or attraction towards corpses. A thing that exists. I know we often spend a lot of our time directed at the other files, so we don't really talk about these, but they're out there. Necromantic is a very annoying film because while watching, I was bored, then I was pissed, then I was uncomfortable, then I was into it, then I was studious, then I was appalled. And I'm just gonna do you the favor of telling you what happens in this movie because some of you won't be able to even sit through this shit. But hey, on the topic of fucking things that aren't alive. We got flesh. With the red light But I work from home so I get packages from flashlight Like they never left cause you still fucking with the best, right? We keep advancing but jerking still at a normal flight Take off all of that jerking talk in your nightstand Day off, who deserves it more than your right hand? Playoffs, got nothing but seeds lined up for the night, damn New flashlight, girl, that's consume me, please consume me If I caught another woman, you consume me New Favorite. And his texture looking groovy, you can't wake up I think I just called you drooling, choose a vag or a buck So you can bust in like a bro and I just batter up And we batter all into it, you know by the way I'm cooling Like blue ice, I tell my girl get a grip but when the mood's right Or I'll just go so low like I'm Hans Boo That flesh lube turn a desert to a monsoon If it's flesh approved, you know that I'm on route Infinity with the shit that I be on, ooh. Use code GGLIGHT for 10% off your order at checkout, link below, and thank you Fleshlight for sponsoring this video. So even though I'm like 98% taking an L on the monetization of this video, I'm still gonna have to blur a lot because I at least want the video to stay up. Our main character is Robert. He works for a cleaning agency that specifically deals in cleaning up incidents or just picking up some dead guy off the street. Robert and his wife Betty are both necrophiliacs. So whatever he can, he'll pocket an eyeball or a kidney to bring home and put on display. His wife likes to bathe in the blood. This is their thing. Robert's watching a program discussing phobias and shock treatment for said phobias. Treatment that would result in the patient even forming a close bond with what they used to fear. And that's when Robert starts to have this flashback, I think? Or it's literally just footage that's supposed to be symbolic of what he's listening to. But in the flashback context, I imagine it's his dad or some shit from when he was a kid. And this is also the piss me off part, by the way. So basically we end up watching this farmer kill a rabbit and then skin him. And I, I, you don't need any more details than that, but it goes on for a while. Now I obviously don't like watching shit like that, but I get even more upset when I don't see a point to it, a la Cannibal Holocaust. Those fucking guys were just like, I just feel like the scene's missing something. We should showcase chop a monkey's head off. Boily. What did you say? What did you say? I don't think the rabbit footage is even theirs because the person doing this seems to have some sort of expertise in this field. But while they're showing this, they keep cutting to Robert performing some sort of amateur surgery. I'm assuming once again, relating to what the program was talking about. So if like that's supposed to be his dad, then he was exposed to this as a child for so much that he now just loves it, right? No time to ponder that thought because the next scene is even more confusing. Feel free to fill me in. There's this gun nut on screen while we listen to patriotic circus music. Take a listen. As his neighbor delicately picks some apples from his tree. The gun nut then takes a couple pops at some birds in the sky and ends up shooting his neighbor in the neck. They then cut the fucking Benny Hill music that's been playing as the nut observes his deceased neighbor. This takes entirely too long. He then throws him in a wheelbarrow to hide the body. Next scene. <laughs> There's not a lot of dialogue in this movie, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. So Robert and the boys fish out a decaying body from the river. And I'm guessing that's supposed to be the apple picker that the gun nut shot and hid? 
Because he's decomposed like hell, but I, he's also wearing that same like knitted black sweater and jeans. So I'm assuming that was the point. Otherwise, I genuinely have zero fucking clue why they showed us that. Anyway, they leave Robert in charge of disposing of the body. And he instead comes home bearing a gift. And his wife is through the roof. Meanwhile, this guy's supposed to be in the ground. So they open it up and they start rubbing it and caressing it. It's sticky, it's slimy. And then we watch them fuck for five minutes straight. But Gigi, how do you have sex with somebody who's so stiff? Why don't you ask your wife, A, hey, O? Oh. No, but seriously, I'm sure some of you are curious as to how they had a threesome with a corpse. And this just shows me your lack of creativity. So Robert saws the leg off a chair that looks like a straight up pipe. And he uses the pipe to prop the body up against, it's his penis. The pipe is his penis. So they stab the pipe in his bowels to stay firm, blue chew who, and then put a condom on it. And listen, if two people fucking a cadaver can use protection, so can your dumbass. Stay safe. But yeah, they start making out and rubbing everything everywhere, just boning a skeleton. Looking at some graphs, it looks like there's been a rise in necrophilia, but it's still mostly a flat line. So anyways, I asked the dead body if he wanted to have a threesome. He passed. Hey, oh! <laughs> Betty's actually made it clear to Robert that she does not want to have sex with a tall corpse. Luckily, they're all under six feet. Like, imagine trying to hit on a necrophiliac and then getting shot down. I've been over here working out, eating better. I've been one bullet away from being fuckable. Okay, 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 that was the last one. I feel like I'm starting to bang a dead horse. So Robert's co-worker starts getting peeved that he's showing up late and also leaving his suit in his locker to stink up the place. So he reports him to the boss and Robert gets fired. We then get like two more minutes of Betty solo in bed with the corpse. She's all cuddled up next to him, rating him some smut. And then out of nowhere, he just starts giving her head. No, oh, please stop. I'm not that type of girl, no. Robert comes home to deliver the bad news and that's when she criticizes him for having a weak spine and letting people walk all over him. Even though that's her type. But she lays into him and is mostly upset that Robert can't be her dealer anymore. She never really gave a fuck about Robert. She just liked that he could bring dead shit to the house. She ends up getting really mad because the corpse he brought home isn't gonna last that much longer. Which, ain't that a bitch? Even when I'm dead, I can't last long in bed. Come on! She ends up leaving and in this scene, we see Robert with a cat lighting some candles as peaceful music plays. I was very ready to turn this movie off, especially when the movie very subtly started to play this. He gives a cute little kitty an appendix or some shit to eat, and then shoves him in a garbage bag. And this is weird to say, but I kind of like this scene. Now, as far as I can see, no cat was harmed in the making of this film. There's a pretty clear cutaway here. The rabbit was real. There was no splicing there. That rabbit... Yes, but this scene is very different. And also, I'm pretty sure their footage. He places a photo of Betty over a fire and it poetically begins to bubble up as we cut back to Robert losing it and starting to just bash the garbage bag across the room as the score goes into hyperdrive. What's the name of that one song? Uh, uh. Cutting immediately to a silent Robert underwater in his bathtub with his battered pet bleeding out above him. He's not dead, but we don't know if he was trying. He then proceeds to smother the cat's insides all over him uh, for uh, far too long. I don't like this scene. <laughs> and now here is another scene that seems like it's out of nowhere. Robert then goes to the movie theater to go watch a movie of a woman that's dealing with some sort of burglar. He pops in, gets smacked around by a guy behind him telling him to move, and he listens because, pussy. We end up seeing a lot of the movie and cutaways to the audience. The woman on screen evades her captor for only so long until he has her tied up. And that's when he starts to toy with her, dragging his knife across her body as he lets out these gargly moans. It's gross. I, I don't get the audio. It's just someone just... <laughs> it's gargled nonsense. And it's then that we see the couples in the audience start to get all giddy with each other, starting to kiss and cuddle up during this scene. The burglar then opens up her top as he still continues to uh, attempt to clear the phlegm out of his throat. And that's when he starts to cut her as she screams in pain nonstop. The audience appears to like what they see, uh, but Robert leaves. So, why did we watch that? This will make me think a little bit more. But my first thought was, oh, it's trying to say something about us. We've spent the movie judging these two necrophiliacs for what they do. But... How far away are we in terms of the entertainment we watch? Like watching a violent, fucked up movie can be bonding time or even romantic time with our significant others. Even a modern example can be like a little fucked up documentary and chill. That's how I take that scene. I think he's pointing at us, which fair, I get it. The second thing, 
I think this is just pronouncing. The fact that Robert cannot be satisfied by alternatives. Just watching this murder on screen bores him. I'm assuming generally and sexually. That's why he leaves. Back at the house, Robert Ponder is what's really here for me now. I lost my wife. I lost my access to dead shit. Snuff films can't get me going. I don't think I need a bookmarker anymore. We can wrap this up. So he pops some pills, slams a little whiskey, and counts sheep. We then get this dream sequence where Robert awakes tearing a garbage bag off his head. Half of his face is rotted, exposing his skull. A woman in white approaches him with a black box, and inside the black box is the head of a corpse, which he gladly grabs and starts playing catch with the woman. Little tossies backsies, and on one toss back to him, it turns into intestines, I think, which he then starts to twirl like a game towel, and then he just frolics. So, what did that mean? Well, let's just keep guessing. Now, I think the obvious takeaway, I think, is finding peace, even joy in death. He's clearly fascinated, even turned on by death to begin with. So wait, now I'm dead? It's kind of lit. What's this? Body parts? Hot and ready? Oh yeah, cause we're all dead. I have an unlimited supply of dead shit. This graveyard is my heaven. But he wakes up, still kicking, and decides to find himself a hooker. She's got a cute little foreshadow before Robert tries to negotiate with her. He wants to have sex, but he wants it to be in a graveyard, for obvious reasons. But I think this is also one of his final attempts to see if there is any type of alternative to his necrophilia. And unfortunately, he can't get it up. The woman starts to giggle, and that's when he begins to choke her, telling her not to laugh at him. He kills her, and it is only then that he is able to clap cheeks. The next part's a bit questionable, but a gravedigger shows up in the morning, and Robert sees him, panics, grabs his shovel, and then just fucking chops the top of his head off. And the scene ends. Let's pause and talk a bit before we get to the end. So aside from the obvious reiteration of he can't be satisfied unless, I think this was also supposed to be his standing up to his bully moment? Because the entire movie, he's been soft. He's been called soft by his co-workers, his boss, his wife, that random guy in the fucking theater. And I guess this is him finally fighting back? But I don't know, it's odd if I'm correct. But I think that's supposed to be the thing. I don't think he picked that girl up planning to kill her. I think he was genuinely trying to see if this would work, and then when somebody was laughing at his inability to perform again, he lost it. We then cut to Robert playing with a caterpillar in the field with some beautiful music. We see a bird flying. Robert feels alive. We also keep cutting back to Robert attaching a uh, Jesus statue to a crucifix as he's also wearing a makeshift crown of thorns. Robert frolics, saying yahoo and yaha. And in this shot, he looks like a young Elon Musk. Back at his home, he's by his collection, and then he grabs a knife. He holds it against his stomach, but then he realizes he can't do it. But, uh-huh, work smarter, not harder. He unzips his pants and then, bazinga, straight into the abdomen. I'm starting to adjust my language in the script because it's a lot, and it's only gonna get worse. I can't, I cannot say the things that I would like to say. So yes, he does impale himself, and that's when we get a full body shot. Hog on a thousand. And that's when he just morphs into a geyser. Loads on loads, and as he continues to, it, it becomes bloody loads. All this, by the way, while cutting back to the rabbit. That's right, we've brought the symbolism back. But now, the rabbit footage is in reverse. So as Robert is continuing to poke away, and also poke away, hey. the rabbit is coming back to life. <laughs> it's an extremely uncomfortable scene. We end by looking at Robert's grave, and who'd have thunk it, a shovel digs in with only a heel in shot as we hear a vine boom. Or the 80s equivalent of a vine boom. The end. Okay, let's begrudgingly talk about that last scene. Okay, we can start at Caterpillar, Metapod, Butterfree, I think we get this one. The Jesus thing. Is he like insinuating that what I'm thinking or? Is he trying to say that Jesus was a necrophiliac? Is that what he's doing? Or is he just fantasizing about dying in that way? Or, or is he like, oh, this Jesus guy gets it. I, I don't, we can move on. So yeah, like I said, he couldn't rage quit without pulling out his Peter first, because that's kind of the whole point of this operation. That's why this is a good idea. You know, that's why he bubble beams everywhere, and it, this is the way he would have wanted to go out. Someone said this was Adam-22 after Lena's tape dropped. The reversed rabbit footage. Healing, I guess? He's offing himself, which is like the cleanest best pleasure to him, which is the good ending for him, and I guess for other people too, because now he's not gonna mess with corpses and other people's dead bodies, which is 
a bad thing to do. I haven't mentioned that once this entire review. That's a bad thing to do. And the woman at the end, we can assume is his ex-wife. You owe me, motherfucker. Give me in death what you could no longer give me in life. It's a weird ass movie. I don't hate it, but I would never recommend this to a soul. But if anything, I hope I cured your curiosity. Mr.GG, merch drop, second channel, Mr. GG. My patrons are beautiful and get an exclusive video monthly. And as always, I am Mr. Gigi, and I am out. Bye.